Adler, you want to get us started? Sure. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome, students, staff, and faculty. Thank you for attending our transfer Tuesday today. Um, today, we, we do have two very special guests, which I will be introducing very soon. I did want to very quickly just introduce myself. I'm Laurie. I'm from Leeward Community College. There's also another Leeward counselor. Her name is Jordan. She's our Leeward online counselor. And also Amy McKee, who's the UH Manoa Transfer Specialist, who oversees the KEAEA program, which bridges um, community college students, Leeward Community College students, to seamlessly transfer into UH Manoa. You can, um, if you don't mind, just jotting your, um, who you are and what campus you're from in our chat. And um, we will be starting with um, the journalism department. Dr. Brett will be sharing about majoring in journalism. And we'll follow that with Dr. Amy, who will talk about the communicology program at UH Manoa. So I'll have Amy McKee talk a little bit about UH Manoa and her KEAEA program. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much, Laurie, and thank you so much to everybody for joining us today. Um, UH Manoa is a great campus to attend um, and offers a lot of programs for students. We have over 100 undergraduate bachelor's degrees for students to choose from, as well as many graduate professional degrees, including law, medicine, business, education, social work, and engineering. Um, some fun facts about UH Manoa, it was founded in 1907 and is considered a land, sea, space, and sun grant institution. We are the flagship campus in the University of Hawaii system and are a highly ranked research one institution, NCAA Division I school, and we strive towards being a native Hawaiian place of learning. If you are thinking of transferring to UH Manoa within the next one to two years, we'd love for you to consider joining the Kaiaiai program. The Kaiaiai program is a partnership between UH Manoa and the community colleges, and we help students transfer smoothly and efficiently to Manoa by providing proactive academic advising, waiving the $7 application fee and $200 tuition deposit. Uh, we provide students with the option to take each Manoa classes while earning their associate's degree, and we give students the ability to register early when they transfer to UH Manoa. Um, if you have at least 24 transferable credits and at least a 2.0 GPA and at least one more semester at the community college, um, that's great. You are eligible to join the KEAE program. So feel free to send me a message in the chat if you'd like more information. Uh, we are signing up students who are planning to transfer for spring um, 2022 or fall 22 or later on. And um, to do it. now I'll uh, turn things over to Dr. Amy Hubbard from the Community Ecology Department who um, can share with us about that major. Thank you for joining us. Hi everyone, can you see my PowerPoint? Can you, oh great, okay. So as you've been hearing from everybody, the University of Hawaii at Manoa gives you a lot of choices, you have a lot of freedom. And so it's really important that you take some time to investigate the kinds of courses and the majors that you might be interested in. So I'm really happy that you all are here today to listen to journalism and communicology. And part of the challenge, though, is that sometimes we have preconceived notions about what a major is and what you do. And yet at a university, many times what you've learned about in high school or even at a community college might not be exactly what you're going to get at the University of Hawaii at Manoa, because the major is often shaped by the faculty, the department's mission. And so that's why there's lots of different angles that people can take. And so today I'm going to tell you a little bit more about communicology. So we're in the pool of communication and information, but we have a particular area that we focus on because communication can mean a whole bunch of different sorts of things. And my, my parents don't even know exactly what I study in communicology. All the, you know, before they used to think, before we used to be called speech. So all they thought that, oh, all we did was talk. And I'm like, mm, not exactly, right? And so being at Manoa, what you get access to is you get faculty who actually study and research the very things that you're learning about. And in fact, some of my students who help out in research that I've done, now the work that we've done is now published in, in textbooks as well. So you can actually be a part of knowledge creation when you come to Manoa, because not only are you learning from the people who help to write those textbooks, who do the research on that, but now you can be a part of that research 
research that then gets funneled into the textbooks and on and on. And so we say in some sense, you have immortality from that aspect because now that work stays in test textbooks beyond, beyond us living here in the world. And so today, what I thought I would tell, cover for you is overview what communicology is, tell you a little bit about the communicology experience. And actually, I'm going to give you some questions that you'll have to answer in the chat of things that we talk about in our classes. And then I have a couple of students who are trying really hard to get here, but they are engaged in other sorts of activities. But if they can make it, they'll be coming and they'll be sharing their own experience with you. So you can hear something from the student's perspective. And so those two students I have are Mark Jensen Bumanglag and Julia De Jong. So both of them will be coming a little while later, hopefully. They, and if not, then we'll just move quickly on to the question and answer period. So first off, I thought I'd start by sharing with you a video. And so this video was actually created by some of the students in our persuasion class, because what we do in our department is that we cover three major areas. So three major functions of communication. We don't cover everything, so this is our niche, the three major functions of communication. So the first one is message processing or creating understanding. So that is, how do we come to understand that what's in my mind is in your mind? How do we figure that out? Well, we do that through communication. And so we might be, we might look at your nonverbal behavior. So a class that I'm teaching this semester is nonverbal communication. And so we might look at how are you sitting right now? Are you leaning back? Are you leaning forward? What's your face doing, right? We are in Zoom a lot. And so probably some of you are staring at your face more and you're like, oh, am I lopsided? Am I looking? Am I looking at you? Am I looking at something else? Can people see what I'm doing, right? So we look at those sorts of things. And sometimes we can't tell now whose turn it is to talk because part of the way that we communicate is by some subtle behavior. So many times I know when a student wants to talk is because they lean slightly forward and I can hear them inhale. So they go, oh, and they lean forward, then they go, oh, somebody has something to say, or they shift in their part. But if you're in a Zoom, we don't have access to some of those sorts of cues. And so how do we come to understand each other? Or we talk about how messages work. So if I say, hi, how are you? Many times what you respond is not with fine, thank you. Instead, you'll say, hi, how are you? And then we'll go on our way. So nobody answers anybody's question and yet we've communicated with, it, with each other. So how does that happen? Why does that occur, right? We talk about those sorts of things and how we're still able to get along with each other. The second function that we deal with is persuasion. So how do you influence somebody? How do you resist being influenced by somebody else? What kinds of words are more persuasive than other words? I always use this example of commercials because people who design commercials really know who their target audience is and how to reach that certain audience. Because all the Taco Bell and the Jack in the Box commercial, commercials, I don't pay attention to. It's not persuasive to me. But my husband, if he sees any new food item in Taco Bell or Jack in the Box, he's like, oh, we have to go eat that because they know him as the target audience. They know how to persuade him, how to influence him with their messages. And then the third area that we deal with is interpersonal relationships, interpersonal communication. And so these are things like, well, how are you, who are you attracted to? How do we show somebody that we're attracted to that person? How do we maintain love and commitment in a relationship? How do we break up with other people? So there's actually patterns associated with how we do each of these different processes. And so we talk about these areas in, in communicology. And then from those three functions, then we cover a whole variety of different sorts of classes. So next semester, I'm teaching a class on conflict management because part of that is relationship, part of that is messaging, understanding the other person, and part of that is persuading the other person that you're right and the other person might not be right. But we'll talk about whether or not right or wrong is actually a good idea in relationships as well. But you can see that the semester after, I teach a class in deceptive communication. So how do we go about deceiving other people and how do we go about detecting the deceptions of other people? So again, with those three functional foundations, you can see a lot of different, a lot of different classes are possible in health communication, in family communication, in a variety of different sorts of areas, in political communication, in a variety of different areas. So I'm going to show you this quick video now of the of what our students did on what the communicology major is. Communicology is the study of communication from a scientific perspective. 
we think our major is beneficial to any person because we all communicate with someone else. You get to understand what the power of your communication actually has. And then once they do that, then you can harness that power. We tend to think that, oh, we, we know it all. We already know. Uh, but we don't. <laughs> Often time, just because we use communication doesn't mean that we are an expert of communication. Comedy definitely gave me the skills to have more insight into what other people are thinking and to be able to interpret their communication in different ways that I didn't really understand before or that weren't really available to me. If you look at job requirements, there are some technical things that you need, but along with that, companies really value being able to communicate effectively. I think what you can get out of this communicology degree is that students get lots of versatile soft skill that are required, that are wanted once they get out of a college. When they are on the job market, that's what employers want. I think it's unique from other majors because it's a important life skill like, that can be used anywhere. It's an area of life that other degrees don't really get at. Communicology isn't taught really anywhere else. This is a unique one-time opportunity kind of place to do all of this. Everybody in the comedy department clearly has like a love for the major and for the information. It's like people are in this major because they like talking to other people. I think it's just so easy to like make friends or like make these good connections with other people. The cool thing about communicology is that it opens many doors for you. Honestly, I feel like that's kind of the benefit is that it is so broad. Many people ask the question, what can one do with a communicology degree? A communicology can, student can do practically anything. In communicology, it's not that you study communicology, you have to be a communicologist, right? But it is that these are the tools that are going to enhance whatever interests you might have. So that's why we have students who have gone on to postgraduate work in law, in medicine, in public health, in social work, in psychology, in education, because it's that good sort of foundation for all of those sorts of occupations. Anyone can be a major. Anybody who is interested in human being and communication, why people do what they do, and who, who doesn't, who are not interested in these things. And you don't have to be like the most extroverted person or the most introverted person. We actually have those extremes, but what they share in common is that the extroverted and the introverted person is interested in people. We are probably one of the biggest minors on campus because I think every major who learns about us sees that what we have to offer will complement whatever their major is. Because we have a variety of different classes, a lot of people who are in different majors might still benefit from our classes. So even if they're not majoring with us or minoring with us, our electives are very helpful in a lot of different areas um, because we focus in specifically on how to communicate effectively in these different areas. Yes. I think for everyone, anyone even interested in the field, just try out a class. Just try one out. They're all a good time. It's a really inviting major, so I say try it. Don't, don't be nervous. Don't be shy. If you're looking for a personal relationship with your department, if you're looking for an experience to improve multiple aspects of your professional, personal life, if you're looking for happiness, uh, the comedy department is the way to go. It's the, it's the best department, I think, available at UH Manoa. Join us today. Join us today. Join us today. Join us today. Please join us today. Join us today. And so that was a quick video from our students in our persuasion class, trying to persuade people to major or minor in communicology. Now, let me recap some of the kinds of knowledge and skill sets that you'll get by becoming a communicology major. And so the first one you already heard in the video, it's communicate effectively. So if you're interested in communicating effectively, that's one of the areas that we focus on. The second is how do you un understand and explain other people's communicative behaviors? So one of the things that happens is that it, it's not just about skill building, but when you understand why people do the things that they do, why they why what they're curious about what they're interested in and then what happens from that is that they then want they can then troubleshoot something so they can problem solve a situation because now they understand why somebody might be doing what they're doing and then they can figure out how they might want to respond in that particular circumstance we also help people to understand how do you make a compelling and convincing argument
So not only during arguments, but maybe you are doing a public health campaign, or maybe you are in marketing, or maybe you are a parent and you're trying to persuade your child to do something, then we'll help you to have the skills tool set to do that, as well as understand, well, what makes people more willing or less willing to change? And might certain kinds of approaches be more or less effective in that regard? And then the last sort of set of skills that we, we give people and the knowledge bases that we give people have to do with finding and evaluating information. So how do you find this information? How do you evaluate whether or not it's credible, if it's not credible, where it came from? And then how do you assess those sorts of data? How do you interpret data? How do you interpret numbers? What does that mean? And then when people use that when they're communicating, how is that persuasive? Is that not persuasive? We talk about all of these sorts of different aspects. And so as a function of that, because you can see how it sort of works or operates, what we see happening then is that people in our major don't become a communicologist, as we said in the video. Instead, they pursue a, a whole variety of different sorts of occupations, depending on their interests. So we have people who might be in the media, a television, we have people who are, so these are all, we've pulled all of our majors and we have them listed in our website of all the different sorts of occupations that we have that they have, as well as the employers that have have taken them on. And so it might be in television, in radio, we see people hosting their own shows, but we also see people in business, in flight attendants, executives. We see people who are pursuing postgraduate degrees as well. People who are in marketing, who are in education, who are editors, who are managing in stores or in restaurants, who serve as counselors or academic advisors. So we see a variety of these different sorts of occupations for our majors depending on what they're interested in because it's who doesn't need communication skill and knowledge with whatever occupation and profession they're doing. But we also know that they need these kinds of skills and knowledge in their personal life as well. And so what I thought I would do is show you a little bit of some of the questions we might ask students in class. So this is the first question. And so what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to answer the question. Okay, so here's the first question. So this is a pickup line that a student actually received. So these, I gathered pickup lines from students and either they had to actually have heard it, somebody tried it on them or they used it on someone else. So this is the first one. So you have to judge whether or not it's terrible, acceptable or excellent. And all you have to do is type in A, B, or C in the chat. So just type in, which. what do you think? Do you believe in love at first sight or do you want me to walk past you again? So is that a good pickup line or not? Terrible, acceptable, or excellent? So go ahead and jot down A, B, or C in the chat. I'll wait, let's see what you choose. We have A, B, and C. Everybody chose a different one. <laughs> Any other choices here? Oh, B, acceptable. It's funny. A, terrible. B, oh, okay. So only one C. So I'll speak to the C first. So if you chose C, what, what I say to people is that many times this doesn't work for most people, this particular pickup line, because what you're trying to do is get a conversation. But I also say it only has to work for one person. So if one person thinks it's excellent, what we see with these pickup lines is that people just tell lots of different people. And as long as you encounter that person who thinks it's excellent, great, right? You get to talk to that particular person. Uh, but many people we see as uh, talking about it as terrible or acceptable, depending on we see many men and women differences. So there's gender differences here. So sometimes men say, oh, it's kind of funny. So then I like it, I'll do it. But when we ask women, they often don't like the funny kind of thing in general. Sometimes it could work, but many times it doesn't work. And so we can, we would talk about that. Does it really get you to start talking to that person or do you chuckle and move along, right? So those are some of the ideas that we might talk about as well as differences between men and women in our classes. Okay, here's another example. So another student in a small class, which meets three times a week for the entire year, has just given a class presentation. We've all had that, right? It was very badly done, poorly prepared and poorly delivered. And here she sits down, passes you a note. How did I do? How do you respond? What's your message? What's your message that you're going to say? A, you did very well. I, I really liked it. So lie. B, you were terrible. Bad job. Brutal honesty. C, 
not well, but don't feel bad about it. Mm, it's sort of honest, but also trying to soften the blow. Or D, you're braver than I would be. Which one would you choose? So go ahead, make your choices. So we have lots of C's and D's and a B. <laughs> so nobody would lie. So we call it lying in the United States, right? Because you did very well. So that's the opposite of the truth here. But we would talk about this as an intercultural difference because in other parts of the world, they would say A is not lying. They would say A is what's necessary in this, in this interaction to maintain relationships with other people. So we talk about that. How, why are the choices? What are the things that are affecting your choices here? And so, uh, so the brutal honesty, what's going on in your mind about saying, oh, you were terrible, bad job, right? You want to tell them the truth, but what does that do then to our relationship with the other person? And is it okay or not? Or sometimes people say, well, it's because I would want to know. And so then we talk about what's changeable, what's not changeable. What we see most of the time is that people choose D, that you are braver than I would be. So that's an equivocal answer. So that's something sort of vague, not, not quite answering the question, but sort of. So we talk about that. Is, is being sort of equivocal lying or is being sort of equivocal not lying, right? And so we talk about those sorts of issues in our class. So last question, who is related to each other? So you have to figure out who's related to each other. And then type in A, B, C, or D. Who's related to whom? I see you're all over, all over. <laughs> okay, so let me tell you then. So one is the sister of three, and two and three are dating. One is the sister of three, two and three are dating. So this person, number three, was in my class, and he was like, we were explaining something about what happens. Because And he said, ah, this explains everything that's going on in his life. And he said, what was happening is that when he would go out to eat with his girlfriend, number two, people would say, oh, is that your sister? And then when he would go out to eat with his sister, he would say, oh, is that your girlfriend? And he felt icky about that because like, what's going on? Well, we explained that in our communication classes, that what's going on is that we often date people who are similar to us in attractiveness. And when they're similar to us in attractiveness, they end up looking like us. So it's no wonder that the people you date often look like a relative to you. And so, and when we talk about people who are dating with another person, then what happens is that if we're mismatched, then our friends will say, oh, what's going on with you? Why are you seeing that person? They will question that. And that tends to pull our relationships apart versus keeping our relationships together. So these are the kinds of things that we might talk about in our classes. And so I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit because I see that Mark is here. And so he might be able to answer some of your questions uh, from the student perspective. But before I do that, I just wanna give you a quick, you can major or minor in communicology. It's 33 credits for the major, 15 credits for the minor. And then that's the website that you can use a quick one to get to our page that lists everything on there for what's required and you can always contact me. But now I just want to go to Mark because so that he can introduce yourself and tell him why he became a communicology major. Mark. Okay, hello everyone. My name is Mark Jensen Bumanglag. I graduated from Waipao High School in 2015 and then I, trans um, I attended Leeward Community College, College, Leeward Community College. <laughs> After high school and I, after I graduated with my liberal arts degree at Leeward, I actually transferred to UH through the KAEA program and I, um, I double majored in psychology and communicology and I'm a currently um, a communicology MA, I'm part of the communicology MA program. So what motivated me to study communicology were the different classes and different subjects that they offered such as conflict management, interpersonal communication, persuasion, and mainly creating understanding. And it, I was very interested in doing 
something in therapy, counseling, possibly teaching, but I wasn't sure quite, um, I wasn't quite sure what to major in or what to kind of do after I get my, I got my bachelor's. So when I stumbled upon community ecology um, and taking classes just, uh, such as creating understanding, I was very surprised with how much of the knowledge I would, I, that how much of the knowledge I was able to, I was able to um, apply in real life. Um, one of the things that stood out to me with COMG was understanding that different people have different thoughts when they hear certain words. Um, such as, or um, understanding that that people with their experiences come up with different thoughts and different kind of understandings of certain things. And a couple of exa examples of this was when I was meeting up, I was supposed to meet up with a friend at Walmart. So my back then I was living in Waipahu and then my friend was living in Milani and we both texted each other, let's meet at Walmart. But for me, when I think of Walmart, I think of the Pearl City Walmart, which is closer to Waipahu. And for him, obviously, he thought of the Mililani Walmart. So we ended up being at separate Walmarts. And if I had known or understood that some people have different thoughts or um, come, come up with different thoughts when they hear certain words, I probably would have communicated better with my friend. And also with the password game that we um, um, I would do with with my students since I'm a teaching assistant for Kanji as well. Um, one time a student said the word zodiac and what he actually meant was not like Taurus or like all those zodiac signs, but he meant zodiac the boat. So those things kind of being more aware of those things kind of helped me become a, a better um, communicator in a way. And it helps me a lot in terms of when I do lectures for my students. Um, putting on um, creating messages in a way that that would be that would eliminate a lot of misunderstanding and that's what community ecology has helped me a lot with and so um, uh, any advice that I would tell incoming students um, in TUH or people transferring is to explore and to gain as much knowledge as you can um, hopefully when we do go back to in-person classes or be able to go on campus, like just walking around campus and being exposed to a lot of information is really helpful. And that's how I stumbled upon community ecology. Um, community Thanks ecology. so much, Mark. Yeah. That's really great. I know we're running out of time, so I wanna give um, some options for questions. And then I'll, if you have any anything else to add, I'd love for you to add in the, um, the tips. <laughs> And so I'm just gonna, here's our contact information, our general contact information, and then we're open for any questions that um, we can hopefully address for you all. Awesome. Thank you both. That was so awesome just to kind of get a grasp on what is communicology. So um, I will ask the question that I asked of Brett already um, about the online format, being able to complete this degree fully online. So and someone asked about that too in the chat and that's not possible. So we don't have an online degree. Part of that is uh, some issues around the university and accreditation and, and so those sorts of things get in the way of offering however many classes that'll be online. With that said though, we do offer some of the classes online. So there's ways of taking classes and there's also there's also ways of being we can be creative in doing some of the things for example we have an internship class journalism has an internship class so while it's not online it's not meeting every single day as well it's meeting once a month for us where we talk to the student and then they do some of the work off-site or sometimes it's independent research a reading class in which case we work on research on the side so it's not the same as a, a in-person class where you have to meet at a certain time, but it's tailored to the students. So there's some flexibility in that. And we are planning on offering some classes online. It just won't be all of the classes online for the major, but there is room for creativity in that. So there's still ways of trying to accommodate some people's schedules and, um, and their need for having most classes online. And sometimes what happens in the summer is that we offer our classes online during the summer. So then people are able to take the classes then that they we would like that they can't take during the regular semester. Uh, 
All right, folks. So just like with the last presentation, if you have any other questions, feel free to pop them in the chat um, or you can use this Q&A feature if you would rather uh, you know, post your question anonymously. Um, Amy, Lori, do you guys have any questions for these two? Actually, I just want to follow up about the online degree thing. So um, could it be possible that, you know, if a student is maybe going part time, maybe um, okay with not having all the options, they might be able to kind of craft their degree as online? Or is there like one or two specific courses that like will never be online that will kind of hinder them? So um, what we're what we're doing, because all of our classes were online in the past year. So what we're doing is being very thoughtful about what classes are best taught in which mode or which method and which one has flexibility in it. So what we found is that some of the classes weren't as successful online because students really said they needed to have that in person, they needed that access. And so we based it off of those sorts of feedback. And so while most would be able to be handled on a part-time basis or maybe over the summer and be able to get a lot of the classes done that way, at least for our major, but some we we are looking at might not be the best because when students actually have to take it online they don't have a good experience and so we're trying to to address that with more with in person because we they said that that's the way that they work better for them thank you so much for that clarification Lori, right, Jordan, do you have any questions i'm trying to think of questions that was such an amazing you know uh full presentation yeah uh, I, I have no questions but um i'm sorry can you all hear me okay mm -hmm. oh, okay but thank you so much amy that was a, a very thorough and enthusiastic presentation that makes me feel like going back to school <laughs> so and also hey, mark yeah I'm maybe and mark it's um so nice to see you doing well thank you for sharing yeah, Mark, Mark, would you be able to give um, a tip on how to succeed in communicology? Mm -hmm. Like, do you have any tips uh, or advice for people? Like if they decide to major in what what's helped you to be successful? Something for me, um, specifically with communicology is just attending class in general. But like we always had um, we always had really great discussions the, um, from my experiences, the lecturers or professors always kind of probed us with um, discussion questions, makes us think about our own experiences, being able to apply um, the concepts that we learn. And in that way, when we go back home, for example, or meet friends, it's like, oh, I could see that there may be, there may be this type of attachment style. So it kind of gives me that understanding way better when we discuss things in class. So definitely attend class, attend class a lot. What, what about from transferring? So you said you transferred over, right? So what helped you or what didn't help you in that transfer process? Yeah, so I mentioned about um, the KEA program um, while being at Leeward. And I, th I thought that was a very helpful experience with me because uh, it was a long time ago. But from what I can remember, um, we, we had to meet with advisor. My advisor was Melissa Jones back then. And she would always kind of tell me, hey, these are the classes you could take now at Leeward that are available. And like, if you, um, and at that time I wanted to major in psychology and she would tell me all these things. Like these are the classes that are available at um, Manoa that you will need to take then, or like it would be available at this community college. So it was really helpful at that time to, to see what's available on at Manoa and what, like, what, what other programs or counselors are available over there. Thanks, Mark. I also see that Julia is here. Hi, Julia. Thanks for coming. Hi, thank you for having me. I know you were coming from teaching a, a class, but I was hoping you could quickly uh, um, maybe introduce yourself. And then what we are talking about is Mark was giving some tips on how to succeed in communicology. So Mark's tip was attend class, which is so important. People Very think, important. oh, it's optional. I don't have to. But right, attend class is read the syllabus too oh my gosh read the syllabus and attend class you yes. go a long way doing that julia so could you introduce yourself and maybe give us some advice so yes of course hi my name is julia de Jong. i'm originally from long beach california 
I have an undergrad or I have a bachelor's in Comgy and now I'm a master's student in Comgy Community College. So I'm very happy to be here. Um, as you can see, I liked it so much that I did my master's or currently doing my master's. And a tip for me being in the community college department is to get to know your professors. We are a very tight knit, very close, small department. And you know, it's not like you're just a body or you're a number in this big mass lecture of 250 people. It's typically our classes range from 20 to 30 students or even less depending on the class. But my tip is, you know, just to get comfortable with your professors because they truly care about you and they see your face when you do attend classes. So, you know, just make an effort to go talk to them um, during their office hours or even after class because they generally care about you and what you are interested in. And they will always have a great conversation with you no matter what, as well as your classmates. So if you are transferring, don't be afraid to, you know, ask your person, your classmate sitting next to you, like, oh, hey, you know, hi, I'm Julia, nice to meet you. It's from my experiences, I've only met great people from being in comedy classes. So don't feel hesitant to be like, oh my gosh, like, I'm going to sit in the corner, nobody's going to notice me. No, we do notice you. And we try to make you feel as welcomed as possible. And so it's just a great experience. And that is pretty much all, all I have to say is just a great experience from being in comedy. Julia, I think it's a really good point about getting to know your classmates, because sometimes what I've been noticing now is students are like on their phones during before class, right? So nobody's chatting with anybody else. And then I literally have to say, put your phone down. You have an opportunity. Somebody's sitting next to you. Go say hi to that person. Ask them how their day was. And so and then after you give them, you know, the uh, the little nudge, then all of a sudden they're like chatting and talking a lot. And and it's so gratifying, like when you hear the noise, right, when people are all talking ahead before class. And so that's one thing that we really encourage people to do is to talk to each other. Adding on to that, sorry, from personal experience, when it was, I think, syllabus week and we were doing icebreakers and getting, know, getting to know our classmates, there was two other girls in my class that had mentioned that they were from Southern California and then they started talking. And then one day I was wearing a shirt that like had LBC on it and they were like, oh, you live in Long Beach? Oh, I live like five minutes away from them. And the other girl was like, oh, you know, I live 25 minutes away from there. I live in here. And so from just basically listening to our classmates and just, you know, paying attention to them, we created a relationship and I still keep in contact with them. And I think this was back in 2017. So just being able to pay attention to your classmates and talk to them rather than scrolling on TikTok or Instagram, it really can create a strong relationship. Well, and that's what we talk about in class, right? How do you build relationships? Well, we build relationships with people primarily starting with small talk and trying to discover similarities with the other person. And then once you're able to find those similarities, then it's really easier than to carry on a conversation with that person. But if you don't have practice in that, so many people, if they don't practice it, then it gets harder and harder. So it's really important in the college classroom to, to get your feet wet if you haven't already done so and chat with other people. Amy, that kind of reminds me. So is this a is this an interesting major if you're if English is your second language, right? Because you're you're talking about so many different things related to communication that I feel like would be like, especially when you talk about cu different cultures and just the nonverbal stuff. I mean, do you see a lot of um, students that have English as a, as a second language major? Oh. In so we do. In fact, I was talking to someone yesterday who was in Japan, who was English as a second language, and that she was coming to study communicology because she's really interested in that. What I would say is that we have students who English is a second language, but sometimes it makes them scared because they have to talk. Right. So she was scared to about needing to talk. And so, but understanding that process is very helpful because then it, it allows you to feel more comfortable is that we're very forgiving of, of somebody's missteps in words or whatever. We do that ourselves. Mark just gave an example of that, right? Of going to different locations. And so then say, oh no, everybody has these sorts of problems or these sorts of challenges that we face. But we also see that many of our majors, maybe they're not international students or English is in a second language, but they're interested in other cultures. So we're actually ranked as one of the top in a cultural communication departments in the entire United States. And so people really are interested in other people in finding out how other people think. It's often, they are like, 
oh, wow, they often are surprised when, oh, somebody else wants to smell you. And that's how we get to know you. And, you know, and so, so lots of those, they're interested in that, in different ways of knowing and different ways of thinking about things. And so whether it's not somebody who has English as a second language or somebody who is just interested in traveling the world or learning about other people, this is something that they are drawn to. Very cool. Yeah, thank you. I have a question about um, kind of like the transition from bachelor's to master's program for um, our two student panelists. What was that like for you folks? And if you um, could share with our students about that. Go ahead. Uh, from my experiences, I got invited um, by one of the um, Homji faculty into like an MA program, kind of like informational session. And I thought that was a very, uh, at that time I was, uh, it was my last semester and I was not sure what I was gonna do after um, getting my bachelor's and then that opportunity came. So I went and I went for it. I, nothing has, no, I, I was, um, I didn't have any decision yet, but I think after going through that session, it gave me a better idea of like, Kind of what I want to learn more about, um, not just from myself, but in terms of the subject that I also want to learn more about. Um, and basing it off from my experiences with like COMG uh, during my undergrad, I really enjoyed learning about the subjects. Um, so I think that um, moving into um, the MA program, it really gives me an opportunity to learn about what I want to learn more about or like kind of discovering what I. My, I want to discover through myself also. Very similar to Mark's experience. I was invited to a luncheon and I was just going in open-minded and just have hearing, seeing and hearing what, you know, these current MA students were talking to us about and sitting as like a, I think I was a senior, my fall semester. So just starting my senior year and just picturing like being in their shoes and just going into the MA program and being able to elaborate more on theories, go in depth more, find more connections. Because in undergrad, I was a shy student and I didn't really like to talk and create discussions with my classmates. So being in the MA program, it's a very close knit. We only have about seven students at max right now. And it really helped me get out of my comfort zone and, you know, strike up conversations or make connectives of, oh, my personal experience lines up with this theory. And I never would have thought about it if I didn't see it in this light. So um, back in undergrad, we learned about these theories, but we really didn't kind of elaborate on it. And then when we go into MA, you just have two hour discussions about one single theory. And you're like, I would have never imagined me being in this position talking about something so small, but then finding all of these, you know, personal experiences and you're just kind of mind blown about it. So it was, it was rough because I wasn't used to the workload in terms of reading empirical articles. I wasn't very good at it in undergrad. So being in the MA program, it kind of was tossed in the deep end and just obviously the professors were here to help out, but in terms of like my personal growth, I had to figure out, okay, what works best for me with time management and figuring out how to understand these articles in a way that will stick with me. So um, for me, in terms of just the transition from undergrad to grad school is hard. Granted, everybody can say that it's hard, but trying to figure out work, what works best for you is I think the most prominent key in order to succeed for being in a grad program. I also want to add something because what they've described sort of mimics that transition from a transfer student over to UH Manoa too, right? So um, it's harder than you think and that be careful about overloading your, your schedule because you think, oh, I already did, I did really well here, then it, you know, it's going to be the same, but it's not quite the same in that right regard. So you have to sort of be prepared for that. But I would also say that the best learning happens when it's hard. Learning doesn't stick when it's easy because you just assume you know it. And so you don't process it deeply. You don't think about it as much. And so what Julia did, for example, in, oh, it was hard. So I have to figure out something on how to do that. That's how you actually learn and how you can draw upon it in the future. That if you don't, if you don't, um, if, you, if it's so easy for you, 
then you're not really elaborating, not really thinking through, and it's not going to stick in your brain. So when something is hard, when it's challenging, don't run away from it. That's when you're like, dig in. That's when you're like, okay, I need to figure this out. And you can figure it out. And if you can't on your own or you need extra support, we're here. There's other resources on campus to help you to do that, to say, well, what well, have you thought about this? Why don't you try this sort of thing? And then, then you can really have that learning happen for you. That was so well spoken. I'm just like snapping here. <laughs> like, yeah, all the snaps. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um, I know we're running short on time, um, but I just had one more question. Um, uh, is there going to be a BAM program for the community ecology program? Um, like a, a so well, we're actually working on it right now. So we're actually working on it right now, mm -hmm. uh, a BAM. And so, um, so yes, it's in the works. Mm -hmm. Awesome, that is so great to hear. And for our students on the call who don't know, um, a BAM is a combined bachelor's master's degree program, helps you uh, get a bachelor's and a master's degree in five years. So um, yeah, it's a great um, program. But I mean, um, your department sounds amazing. So I wouldn't, you know, object to the sixth year <laughs> to get to stay longer. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much to our panelists for joining us. Any final thoughts before we um, close our session? The only thing that I would say is that please come and talk to us yeah. and that if you want to get in touch with students, I'm sure Julia or Mark would be happy to chat with you as well to talk about the process and to and then um, be ready for a challenge. We like a challenge. That's, I mean, we've all done that. Mark's done that, Julie, I've done that. We're like, oh no, what have I done? But that's where, that's where the good stuff is. So that's where you know you're alive and mm -hmm. it's working. And when people were like, why are you doing that? It's like, well, because it's a challenge because I want to. So I would encourage you to not steer away from something that might seem scary or unusual or different, but to lean into that. And so communicology allows you to see the world in a different way and to talk about it. Thank you. I know I wrote down that quote, the best learning happens when it is hard. I'm going to put that on my wall. <laughs> awesome. Um, yeah, so thank you, every, thank you so much to everybody for joining us today. Um, feel free to stay on the call if you have any more questions. Um, if not, our next Transfer Tuesday webinar um, session is going to be on April 13th with the SOAS and NREM departments. So be sure to um, stay tuned for that. I hope everybody has a wonderful day.